To me, as an engineer, part of our training in engineering is always about um, turning a problem into a solution. And when it comes to healthcare, if you want to get to better outcomes, it's a case of reverse engineering where you have to get to the better models, which in turn depend on better data in the first place. It's data that is the sort of Achilles heel here. At the Plant Health Informatics Lab, we study the intersectional determinants of health because not everyone in the society is equally impacted by climate change. So we know that, for instance, um, you know, women uh, during their pregnancies, the very young children, the very elderly, people who work in the outdoors, unhoused people are at higher risk. That said, there's still a lot that we don't understand about the risks. So a lot of the work that we are doing is to try and fill these gaps using um, big data from both from healthcare and bringing in data from the climate field, weather stations or from high above from space. It's all about sort of identifying patterns and those details and intricacies that we wouldn't otherwise be able to, um, you know, identify with the naked eye. So that is what AI is good at. And that is one of the things that Oxford is great at enabling and fostering that environment that allows experts from different backgrounds to produce solutions that make sense and are appropriate for implementing in practice. The malaria case study is a great example of this. Um, I mean, as, as we know, malaria is still very much a leading cause of mortality. And climate change, if anything, is multiplying this threat. Temperature, how much rainfall uh, an area receives, and vegetation, these are all known to have uh, links with malaria incidence. And it's, it's, a, it's a preventable disease but across different climatic areas, um, over time, the job of forecasting or predicting outbreaks is quite challenging, compounded by our reliance on manually conducted small sample size surveys from households and so on, you know, not being very representative. So that's where these um, approaches like remote sensing um, and AI can come in. What we did was to collect regional information through satellite for 30,000 sites across India, Pakistan and Bangladesh to build this machine learning model able to accommodate a vast uh, sort of breadth of pre predictive features. And out comes a um, solution that is able to not only predict um, more accurately uh, the next you know, outbreak of malaria cases um, you know, 12 months in advance, um, but also um, in, you know, quicker and saves compute time. The, the next steps would, for this would be to take these models that have been tested in one region and try and see how well they would work, for example, in regions in Africa, for instance, or Southeast Asia or other parts of the world and to, you know, basically test their scalability. The potential is to end up identifying things that were not, you know, previously known um, and, and to come up with new risk factors to develop a, a kind of a universal or global picture and particularly for those regions that have been underserved or under-resourced to provide early warning systems and ultimately that result in uh, better health outcomes for everyone through healthcare policies and um, practice. <laughs>